Welcome to my channel. So this video, I am going to um, read you like a summary of Troy McCoy's interview. So, I mean, I know most of you guys have probably already listened to it, but um, for those of you that maybe listened to it a while ago, because I know some of these interviews is like, wow, I haven't listened to them in so long. That's why I'm kind of going through some of the old um, interviews, recordings, and kind of picking out some some of the more interesting ones or maybe ones that you know I maybe you guys haven't seen in a while and I'm uploading them because you know some of them it's like man I forgot about this or I forgot that they said this or you know and then some I'm getting a lot of comments where people have never even seen some of the interviews so you know so there's a lot of them out there so I'm just going to keep going through them and try to pick out some of the ones that maybe that aren't as um heavily uploaded you know for some of you that haven't seen them yet or the ones that kind of refresh your memory on some of the stuff because like I said you know I started going through the, all these files and interviews like months ago so <laughs> now going back to the beginning again it's like whoa wow I haven't listened to this forever like I forgot that they said this or they said that so anyway um but for those of you who maybe don't want to listen to the whole interview or just want to kind of refresh on what they said I'm going to read you a couple of the summaries like um of some of the interviews like Troy McCoy, um, Nick Thayer and Chad McNeil. It's like a summary of their interviews. Okay. So, but anyway, before that though, there's something interesting that I read that I wanted to read you. So there's like an activity, um, log here that, um, who did this? What did, what did, I'm trying to find what, um, what detective, uh, did this activity. It looks like maybe bakes, but anyway, um, so, they did, like, these the activity, there's five different things that they just marked down, like, a time and date of, um, basically, somebody that calls in, calls them in and, like, makes a, you know, a report or says something or, you know, has a, a request or whatever. So, there's a couple of interesting things here. So, um, 814 on 814, somebody called in at 1504 hours, Holly Coventry. And she said she had a Facebook message, um, read this morning. So if I remember right, there's more in depth where it's talks about where I guess she got, uh, she just received a Facebook message that she thought was kind of suspicious, I guess. So, but remember this was, uh, you know, before they knew what was going on, this is 8.14, so this is just, uh, that would have been, what, Tuesday? Because the 13th would have been Monday. Yeah, so it would have been Tuesday, you know, before they even, they knew. So there was just like a, a suspicious Facebook message that somebody reported, okay? So on 8.14, um, on the same day, at 1500, um, Crystal Michael... Um, she lives in Wyndham Hill at, uh, so at 2.10 in the morning, on Monday morning, she heard a gunshot or a loud car backfire. Concerned her enough to take a picture of the clock. So that would have been right around the time we think this all took place. Um, well, he said in his new confession that, you know, or in his new, that most recent interview, that it didn't happen till like, what was like four or something, you know, closer to five. Um, so, but originally, remember we all, we all thought originally that something happened around two in the morning. So I'm not sure. I mean, I guess two ten that would have been, um, like almost 25 minutes after she got home. And it was so, you know, in the neighborhood, somewhere close, you know, to where um, they live, somebody heard, you know, a gunshot or a, loud, a loud car backfire. So, I don't know what that was. It's kind of odd. Um, and then, 
Let's see. Oh, and then somebody calls in and offers uh, at eight on eight fourteen at fifteen hundred. Somebody calls in and says that they have cadaver dogs that are amazing, offering for free to you know offering basically his services for free. So that was nice. Um, Alan Duffy, yeah, that was nice of him. I don't know if obviously it doesn't look like they used you know used him, but um, and this is the one that's kind of weird, okay? Because no. There's nothing about Jamie Watts anywhere at Chris's sister. I mean, there's no interview. There's nothing. Like, did they not interview her? They interviewed all the family members. They interviewed how many friends. How didn't they interview the sister of the suspect? You know? I don't know. Because if they interviewed her, why would they have kept it out of the discovery? You think they would have put it in? What makes her so special that they're not going to put it in the discovery? So then, okay. So that, okay. If you're going with that reasoning, then okay. So, yeah, they must not have interviewed her. But then you could use that same reasoning of, well, what makes her so special that they didn't interview her? Because, I mean, they interviewed everybody else. Why, even if she didn't want to be interviewed, it's almost like something like your duty. I mean, that's your duty. Like, I mean, something happens like that, then it's almost like, no matter, even if you don't want feel like being interviewed, you just do it and... and, and you know, you wouldn't think the cops would really give you an option. I guess they couldn't force you if they asked her. I guess she could say, um, you know, no. And I, I don't know if they could really force her to be interviewed, you know. But you, I mean, that's kind of weird. Do you think that they asked her and she just said, no, I'm, no, I'm not going to, I'm not, I don't want to be interviewed. I'm not going to talk. I don't know. But anyway, so. So, okay, so on 8-14, at 14-45 hours, which is, uh, what is that? Um, don't want, wait, so that's what, 2-45, I think, right? Uh, 13-40, yeah, two, I think it's 2-45 p.m. Um, so it sounds like, because what they have is it, I'm not sure if this means that they called her or she called them, but it almost sounds like by the the um, statement that maybe they called her. So maybe they did call her and maybe this is it right here. But all it says is Jamie Watts and it says, was talking to media, stated she shouldn't be talking and hung up. That's what it says. So it's almost like they called her maybe to ask her some questions and she told him, oh, I'm talking to the media and then told him, oh, I shouldn't be talking and then just hung up. So I don't know. I guess that's the answer to the question. If, um, what I was just saying earlier is right before that, if did they ask her and she said no. So maybe that was them, you know, trying to talk to her. And she said, no, you know, I shouldn't be talking and just hung, hangs up on him. And, you know, they're probably not going to get like a warrant or whatever you have to get to make somebody talk like interrogation or what would that would it be like a warrant to make them come in to talk or what is that called I don't know but that'd be probably kind of hard to get for just like the sister unless if they thought she was involved in some way you know what I'm saying so if she didn't say no I'm not talking like they're probably not going to go that far into um making her talk unless if they really needed some information from her and obviously they didn't you know um didn't think so you know so it's yeah so they, i guess it does sound like she just said no I'm not going to be talking and hang, hang it up so and then on um the same day 8 14 at 15 15 hours um mother of shanann called and uh so she called them and said she really wants the luggage upstairs searched um it has been untouched since trip. So she just wanted them to search that, that luggage that they did end up searching. Um, I actually have the pictures of them, you know, the uh, photos of them when they searched it and took everything out. I could uh, actually upload too, um, where they went through all her stuff. But I mean, nothing really pertaining to what happened. It was just all her stuff, you know, from the trip. But, um,
Okay, so I just found that interesting because that's that's the only time so far that I've been able to find her name in the discovery. I didn't find anything about her in the discovery. So it's like, man. Um, okay, so. I mean, what do you guys think of that, though? Like, so it does sound, doesn't it sound like um, that she, like, they try to call her. And so, in a sense, talking to the media. So what was she was saying? Was she was currently talking to the media? It sounds like. And, um, because this is a statement. It's just like one statement. I wish they would have been more um, descriptive or more, more to it. Unless if it was just, y'all said, okay, talking to the media. I shouldn't be talking. Hang up. Or... So what, she could talk to the media, but she won't talk to the cops? Or was she telling them, you know what I'm saying? I think I'm looking way too much into it, but was it either she was telling them, yeah, like I'm talking to the media, you know, I shouldn't be talking and hangs up. So, you know, it's okay to talk to the media, but she can't, she shouldn't be talking to the cops. Or was she saying, I'm talking to the media. I shouldn't be talking like, man, I shouldn't even be talking to the media, you know, and then hangs up on them. But the fact that, that she didn't end up talking to the cops or at least there's no record of it. So she had to admit them too, you know, cause if she meant like, Oh, I'm talking to the media. I shouldn't be talking to them. Then you would think she, Oh, but I'll talk to you guys. But then there would be a record of her talking. So it's almost like, and then she just hangs up though. So it's almost like, you know, she was saying, I shouldn't be talking to the cops too, you know? But I don't know if she was saying she was talking to the media. So what, she was talking to the media? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just looking at trying to like analyze that one little statement on all different ways that it could be taken. Either, you know, she was okay. You know, she's talking to the media, but didn't want to talk to the cops. Shouldn't be talking to the cops. Or she was uh, talking to the media and shouldn't be talking to uh the media and telling the cops oh i shouldn't be talking to the media i should just shut up you know uh, but then is she going to talk to the cops or saying both like i'm talking to the media i shouldn't be talking i just need to shut up like she shouldn't be talking to the media or the cops i don't know but then she just hangs up so it's like what i don't know and then there's no other record of her of her in this discovery. So I don't know. It's kind of weird. Okay. So, um, now here is the summary of Troy McCoy's interview. Okay. So, and this is from, let's see what it says here. Eight fifteen. I don't know. That's something else. Okay. Okay. So Troy McCoy, date of birth, blah, 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 phone number, address, whatever. Okay. Greeley, Colorado. Okay. Um, was interviewed at his place of employment, Anadarko Petroleum Corporation, um, in Platteville, Colorado. Okay, so Agent Greg Zetner, Colorado Bureau of Investigation, was also present during the course of the interview. Okay, so after being advised of the identities of the interviewing agents and the nature of the interview, McCoy provided the following information. Okay, so McCoy is an Anadarko field supervisor. He has known Chris for approximately two and a half years. Watson and McCoy have sometimes worked opposite schedules, but they have been on the same work schedule, maintaining E-40 oil sites or batteries since approximately October 2017. McCoy and Watts generally only interact at work, but McCoy met Watts' wife, Shanann Watts, at the 2017 company Christmas party. McCoy was aware that Shanann sold Thrive products, and McCoy's wife had also been involved with the product. McCoy believed that he had been to Watts' home twice, the most recent occasion around February 2018. McCoy's children had played with Watts' daughter, Celeste and Bella. McCoy remarked that one of his children had seen photographs of Celeste and Bella on news channels following their disappearance and had asked if Celeste and Bella could come play. Oh, how sad is that, though? Man. I huh. wonder how they explain that to them hopefully they didn't talk like oh that interview with the Lindstroms how they were talking right in front of the in front of the kids I just can't believe it like they they should not have had them in that in the same room they should not have been listening to that 
that stuff that oh, wow that kind of upset me but anyway um McCoy recalled that during his interaction with Shanann, she was often on the telephone speaking with clients. McCoy was aware that Shanann had recently spent approximately six weeks in North Carolina and Watts had flown out to visit in early August. McCoy was also aware that Shanann had recently traveled to Arizona for a work trip and had just returned. Watts had told McCoy about marital problems with Shanann, but he did not elaborate in depth. Watts and Shanann loved their children and McCoy believed they were trying to talk things out. Watts was described as humble and quiet, and McCoy never had the impression that Watts was seeing anyone else. McCoy last saw Watts Monday, August 13th, 2018. McCoy and Watts were working on equipment at an oil well called Survey 319 near Rogan. McCoy believes he made it to Survey 319 at approximately 8.30 a.m. Chad McNeil and Melissa Parrish were also assisting. Parrish is relatively new, and she was shadowing Cody Roberts at the time. Roberts had reported an issue with the well the previous Friday, August 10th, 2018. So their task at Survey 319 was to correct the problem. The group left Survey 319 at approximately 11 a.m. and traveled to UPRC 1029. At some point after arriving at the second site, Watts began receiving notifications that a friend, Nicole, was ringing his home doorbell trying to contact him. Watts spoke with Nicole on the telephone a few times. He had walked away from a gas motor when he took these calls, but he was in McCoy's vicinity. Watts left UPRC 1029 soon after taking these calls. Watts was driving his Anadarko work truck, which is a brown Ford F-250 or similar. Watts' truck has two toolboxes, two tanks, and other items in the bed. McCoy explained that the beds of their work trucks are generally fully laden, which makes tasks such as hauling an additional air compressor in the bed difficult. The truck is an extended cab, but not a full four-door crew cab. McCoy knows Watts to keep his truck very clean, and he does not believe Watts generally keeps much in the rear seat besides jackets or other clothing. McCoy remarked that Watts' home was very clean when he visited earlier in the year. McCoy messaged Watts later in the day to ask how he was. McCoy provided verbal consent for interviewing agents to access McCoy's cell phone and photograph and video text messages sent between McCoy and Watts. Writer began photographing messages prior to transitioning to video recording due to the amount of content. The messages for both personal and work telephones are maintained on disks and stored in 1A envelopes associated with this document. It should be noted that text messages to Watts' work telephone were recovered. August 17, 2018, during a follow-up interview with McCoy with interviewing agents. Uh, CCBI reporting for additional information about this follow-up interview. McCoy believes it generally takes about an hour or an hour and 15 minutes to drive to Survey 319 from the Anadarko office. There are approximately 500 E40 batteries in the area maintained by McCoy's group. Six or seven of these sites are on or near Survey Ranch, which is a cattle ranch. Most of these are older sites that will be eventually be plugged and abandoned. The sites are generally not very large, and they may contain a couple tanks, a water pit, and a well. McCoy, Watts, and their crews are responsible for keeping these wells operating until the wells are shut down. Survey 319 specifically has tanks, a plunger lift, and a single separator. The tanks have openings that are approximately 12 inches by 12 inches, and the main way cover on the back held by 27 or more bolts. Clean-out crews sometimes come and access these tanks via this hatch. So... He said approximately 12 by 12, but remember that I think weren't they only like eight and a half, nine inches? So I don't know. Yeah, he says 12 inches by 12 inches. That is what he's talking about, right? The opening of the hatch, which um, was it eight and a half or nine inches? But anyway, McCoy was familiar with another associate of Watts, a male, name unknown. Watts had introduced this male to running 10 kilometer runs. The unidentified male's wife is also involved in Thrive, which is how McCoy and Watts met him. Watts has lost weight over the past year or so, which he attributed to working out and meal preparation. Watts explained that he was trying to become healthy. McCoy was not aware of any additional associates, friends, or family for either Watts or Shanann. He was not aware of any jealousy issues, enemies, or any other malicious intent toward either Watts or Shanann. McCoy provided a map of the Survey Ranch and surrounding sites. Writer photographed this map, and these photographs are electronically maintained with this document. Okay, so that's the summary of McCoy's interview. Okay, so here is Nick Thayer's summary of his interview. Okay, so 
Nicholas Thayer, hereafter referred to as Nick, date of birth, Thornton, Colorado, the telephone, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, was interviewed at his residence. After being advised of the identity of the interviewing agent and the nature of the interview, Nick provided the following information. Nick is employed as a media director for Prop Incorporated. 7,600, you know, gives, gives the address of, of his uh, company that he works for, okay? Um, it says he obtained a high school diploma. So Nick's wife, Amanda Thayer, and Shanann Watt set up a play date for the kids in approximately April 2017. So Nick met Chris there at the play date at the park in Frederick. So that summer, the Thayers saw them almost every weekend at each other's home and going out to dinner. So in the fall of 2017, Chris started getting into running. Nick and Chris ran at times through the winter on the weekends. Chris said he was working out at the Frederick Recreation Center. They didn't share much personal talk, though. Chris was self-contained and didn't offer much. We know how Chris is. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to laugh, but yeah. Um, so Nick was also friends with Shanann. They all got along. Nick and Chris mostly communicated through texting about going for runs, sports in general, or making plans for the weekends. There were not many phone calls. There were not many phone calls. So just mostly text, you know. So Nick and Amanda moved to Thornton, Colorado in 2018. The, the Thayers saw Shanann and Chris less. So it looks like they, you know, moved away, you know, farther from where they obviously used to live, it sounds like. So then they just didn't see each other as much. So, Shanann and the kids went to North Carolina for six weeks in June 2018. Chris joined them in North Carolina during their last week there, and they all flew back together. Nick and Amanda saw Chris on the 4th of July at the fireworks show in Thornton. Nick asked Chris a question along the lines of, what's it like to be a bachelor? Chris responded that it was weird being in an empty home and that he was working all the time. Yeah, right, and he remember how he said he would never even spent time at home. You know, he was always at um, NK's, so... Anyway, um, Chris said that Shanann got upset because he missed one of her phone calls. Yeah, because remember, isn't it the phone call he missed, the one where he was at NK's house, you know, on the 4th of July? And so, yeah, he's sleeping at another woman's house. He misses the phone call. Yeah, I think maybe uh, I'd be mad too. <laughs> no, I don't mean to laugh, but I just, yeah. So I'm wondering if that's, is that the... Oh, wait, so 4th of July. So, yeah, he was there the 4th of July. That had to be what he was talking about because it was the 3rd to the 4th, right? When that whole member, he had to talk her off the ledge and she you know, was calling him because he slept over the, the night of the 3rd into the 4th morning, supposedly at her house. But then, you know, she has a different story than Kay. But anyway, so he remember she calls and he sleeps in. He misses Shanann's call, takes it. Uh, well, and Kay's in the shower and then comes in and, and, you know, tells her, you know, I gotta get home. So when she calls back, I'm at home. Um, so, and then later that night, he's at Nick and Amanda's house or he sees them at the fireworks and he tells Nick that, oh, she got mad because he missed one of her phone calls. Chris added that anytime he's working out, he runs upstairs when she calls. And he hides that he's doing stuff without Shanann and the girls. Like, working out? What? Why would she get mad he was working out? Wait, anytime he's working out, he runs upstairs when she calls and hides that he's doing stuff without Shanann and the girls. I don't know. I mean, how would she even know that if he was working out? I mean... If she was, how would she even know if he was downstairs? Oh, FaceTime, I guess. I was going to say, how would she even know if he was downstairs when she called? But if she FaceTimes him, she would. Um, but I seriously doubt that she would get upset if he was working out when she called. Working out without her? Like, she didn't really work out with him. So, I don't know. That don't even make sense to me. Like... Oh, I have to hide. You know, he has to run upstairs when he's working out because he, she would, he hides doing stuff when, without the Shanann and the girls. Like, oh, the kids are going to be mad too. Or Shanann's going to be mad that you're not working out with the kids. I mean, that's not something that don't even make sense. I mean, I could see if he's talking about other things, but he's not making sense where he's saying 
when he's working out, he runs upstairs when she calls because he hides that he's doing stuff without Shanann. So what does he do when he's saying he, when he works out? You know what I'm saying? So, but that makes me wonder if there's a little bit of truth to what he's saying that he does run upstairs when she calls because NK is down there with him, maybe. You know what I'm saying? She's actually down there, you know, a lot of the times when um, she's calling. So he does actually have to run upstairs to answer the phone. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, wonder if there is a little bit of truth in what he's saying, but not just not the complete truth. It's not like he's trying to hide working out. He's trying to hide NK, maybe. I don't know. Just a thought. Anyway, so Nick had no other indication from Chris about the status of the relationship other than those examples. Nick thought perhaps Shanann and Chris were married in 2012. So, what? I don't understand what he's saying. Nick thought that perhaps, oh, maybe they, she, they were asking him, do you know, do you know when they were married? And he's like, well, perhaps he was guessing he wasn't sure in 2012. I don't know. I don't understand that statement. But anyway, Nick stated that he and Chris didn't see each other much and didn't talk much. However, they both signed up for a running race in September 2018. Chris sent Nick a text message photograph of his race shirt and bib number. The two exchanged a few texts regarding the upcoming race. When Chris and Shanann got back from North Carolina, Shanann and Amanda talked for about 45 minutes. Amanda told Nick that Chris and Shanann weren't doing well in their marriage. Amanda asked if Nick saw the post Shania made about Celeste in North Carolina, to which Nick said he had. Nick and Amanda thought maybe that issue was part of the problem. Nick was aware that Shania didn't get along with Chris's parents. Nick received a text from Amanda while he was at work. Amanda told him that Shania wanted them to watch the kids while Shania and Chris went away for the weekend um, of 8 17, 2018. Remember, they were supposedly going to, they're planning that trip to Aspen to, you know, have some time to work on their marriage. So Nick said, okay. Nick and Amanda got back from their Kentucky trip on Monday, 8 13, 2018, around 3 p.m. or 4 p.m. Nick texted Chris to see if Chris wanted to do some more runs before the September run. Nick provided the following text from his cell phone. So Monday at 4.07 p.m. Hey, man, we just got back into town. When can you run? And Chris responded, not sure, man. I can't find Shanann or the kids. Haven't heard from them all day. Cops are here. I will keep you posted. And Nick texts back, whoa, what? That is crazy, man. Is there anything I could do? Chris responds, I don't know, man. It's very odd right now. And Nick responds, we can head up there, bring you some food. We are here for you. So Nick and Amanda went to Chris's house and rang the bell. Chris answered the door. And describing Chris's appearance, Nick stated it wasn't Chris. Nick stated that Chris appeared different, overwhelmed. Like, what is going on? At that point, the cops were gone. Nick Amanda and Chris stood inside by the front door. Nick and Amanda were asking Chris questions about what happened, but Nick could not remember exactly what they asked. Chris told Nick and Amanda the following. This is what he tells Nick, um, Nick and Amanda. Okay, Chris tells Nick and Amanda. That morning when Chris woke up for work, he told Shanann that he wanted to separate. Chris told her before he went to work because he wanted to tell her in person rather than by text or phone. So yeah, so he couldn't just tell her after work, you know, not in the, you know, early in the wake her up at freaking four in the morning. Let's just tell me when I get off work, you know, that, it just doesn't make sense. But anyway, of course we were come to find out none of this makes, I mean, ugh, ugh. okay. So, um, Chris left for work. Okay. Nick stated that Chris did not comment on how Shanann was doing when he left. When Chris was at work, Nicole Utoff began texting him that she couldn't get a hold of Shanann and that Nicole was at their house. Chris headed for home. On the way, he called the girls' school. He was told that they hadn't checked in. Chris told the school to keep the girls on the wait list. When Chris got home, the cops were there and did a walk around. The cops came back with a warrant for a more in-depth search. The cops offered Chris a chance to walk around and search with them, but he said he'd wait outside. Nick and Amanda and Chris continued talking at the kitchen table. Chris continued, Chris said the cops took Shanann's cell phone. The neighbors showed the cops the security footage of him loading up his truck and leaving that morning, but the footage showed nothing after that. The video doorbell didn't show anything. Chris saw a credit card charge for a taxi cab, but didn't know anything else about it. 
Chris didn't know what to think or do. And I still don't know that taxi cab because people were saying, you know, commenting, well, it was Uber, but would it show up taxi cab? Because I used to, when I lived in Colorado, I used to use Uber all the time. And I'm trying to think what it shows up on, um, on your charge. I didn't think it showed up taxi cab. I'm not sure. Anyway, um, so yeah, but he didn't know anything else about it. Chris didn't know what to think or do. Nick stated that while the three of them were brainstorming about what they could be doing, Chris stated, do I walk out into the field to look for someone? Do I walk out into the field to look for someone? Look for some. Look for who? I mean, for someone? Like, what, 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 what do you mean someone? To look for your wife and your kids, you mean? What do you mean someone? That is the weirdest statement. Yes. Uh, to Yeah, what? To look for your kids and wife? Yeah, you go look for, for your kids and wife. Yeah, but someone? I mean, why don't you go look for your family? Yes. Ah, oh, but anyway, Nick stated that Chris made no comments about the fact that Shanann was gone, but all of her stuff was still there. When Amanda mentioned that Shanann's items that were still in the house, Chris confirmed those items as being her phone, purse, wallet, wedding ring, car, car seats, and the kids' medicine. Based on all those items being left behind, Chris indicated that he thought Shanann just left. Anyway, so uh, Nick stated that Chris was in the process of calling and texting Shanann's friends. Amanda said she heard about a potential Amber Alert. Chris said he had been contacting emergency rooms before Nick and Amanda arrived. Nick stated that Chris seemed like he was just trying to process everything. He put his head down a lot. He didn't know what to do. Chris told Nick he didn't want to talk to the news because they might pry and turn his words around. Chris knew how it would look and he would be public enemy number one, Nick stated. He was worried about that. Amanda invited Chris to stay at the Thayer's house. Chris said he wouldn't that night, but he would the next night. Amanda and Chris went home around 7 to 8 p.m. When they got home, they texted Chris at 9.33 p.m. They told Chris they had stopped at McDonald's in a gas station at I-25 and Highway 52 to see if anyone there saw anything. Chris responded at 9.43 p.m. stating, thanks, man. On Tuesday morning, 8 14, 2018, Nick texted Chris to see what it, if he was going to work. Chris said he didn't get much sleep and was going to stay home. Nick and Amanda took their daughter to school. Nick texted Chris at 8 30 a.m. on 8 14 to ask if he had heard anything from the police. Chris responded, Nothing yet. The two texted back and forth briefly. Nick and Amanda drove to Chris's house. On the way there, the news media started contacting them. When they arrived at Chris's house, they found Chris to be tired, not himself, and overwhelmed. Yeah, I bet it, it would be tiring, you know, taking out your whole family. So, yeah, very, very overwhelming. The three sat at the kitchen table. They talked about the possibility of Nick and Amanda talking to the media, about the media talking to Chris. During the afternoon on Tuesday, Nick overheard a telephone call between Chris and either his mother or Shanann's mother. Chris made a comment along the lines of, the longer this goes on, the more I worry that they might be hurt or in danger. Chris stated that he had received a text from a realtor on Monday night. Chris told Nick and Amanda that he and Shanann had talked about putting the house on the market. The house was too big and too much of a financial burden, and they wanted to downgrade. Chris said he wasn't sure if that is what made Shanann mad at him, although Chris hadn't talked about Shanann being mad before that moment. Chris was wondering if that's what all started all this. Chris made no mention about having any girlfriends. Nick and Amanda left Chris's house just before 4 p.m. in order to pick up their daughter from school. They offered to have Chris stay at their house that night. Chris agreed to it. Chris said he would be over in a little bit. When Nick and Amanda arrived at their home, Nick called Chris. Chris said he was coming over. Chris called Nick about 10 minutes later and said that Fox News was still in his front yard. Chris was concerned about how it would look if he was seen leaving his house with a bag of clothes. At around 6.20 p.m., Nick texted Chris again. Chris said he was just leaving his house. Approximately 20 minutes later, Chris called. He told Nick that Frederick Police Department wanted him to come to talk to an FBI agent. Nick responded via text stating that he and Amanda would go there and offer support. Chris responded, thanks, man. Nick and Amanda went to the Frederick Police Department. Chris came out around 11 p.m. Chris gave a brief summary of the interview, but they all decided to talk more once they got home. At the house, Chris said the interview was intense. He stated it was like being interviewed by three people. 
all by one person. He stated that they had his phone and asked him all about stuff in his phone. They asked him about his weight loss and who is she. What? And who is she? They would disappear for 15 minutes and would start over when they came back. He was getting the same questions in a different form. He was grilled and asked, so why did you do it? And at the end of the interview, the agent told him he did a good job. Nick and... Because remember, who is she? They asked him about his weight loss and who is she? Because remember, he didn't um, admit to having an affair to the next day, you know, the day of the polygraph. So... Wonder how, you know, when he was telling Nick, like, oh, they asked... They asked him about his weight loss and who is she? Weren't what, 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 like, what do you mean who is she? I don't know. I'm confused on that one. Anyway, Nick told Chris he had been texting with a private investigator friend. Nick gave Chris some lawyer contact information upon the advice of the private investigator. Chris was appreciative. And then he went to bed. Chris said he was planning on going to work until he, his dad arrived. On Wednesday, 15, Chris told Nick that his work told him not to come in. Chris left the house at 9.30 a.m. to get his dad from the airport. Nick and Amanda went to work. Nick started. Nick stated that he found it strange that Chris didn't know if Shanann had her Apple Watch since it wasn't in the charger. Nick knew that Shanann always wore her Apple Watch and always had her phone with her. Chris never made other comments over time about whether Shanann slept while wearing her Apple Watch. Nick stated that he would preserve all his call and text data. Uh, okay, so that's the end of that one. And then, um, one more. I'm going to do uh, Chad McNeil, a summary of his interview. Remember, Chad McNeil is the, um, the worker, um, his co-worker. Was there that morning with Melissa Parrish. Remember, it was Chad and Melissa Chad McNeil interviewed at his place in employment, Anadarko Petroleum Corporation. McNeil is an Anadarko field coordinator, and he has known Chris for a little more than a year. Approximately a year ago, he transferred to Texas for work, but he returned to the Platteville office on or about August 6th. During his time in Texas, Watts and Troy McCoy assumed McNeil's area of responsibility within Anadarko's oil field around Platteville, Colorado. This area includes E-40 battery south and east of Weld County Road 22 to Rogan, Colorado, and Denver International Airport. McNeil recalled that Watts talked the world of his two daughters. Since returning to Colorado, McNeil had heard Watts talk about his new baby. McNeil described Watts as well-liked, he did not have issues with other individuals, and McNeil was not aware of Watts having any enemies. McNeil was not aware of any issues between his wife and other individuals. McNeil was aware that Watts' daughters had some health issues. On Monday, August 13th, 2018, McNeil was assigned to an oil battery called Survey 319, which is located north of Rogan, Colorado. McNeil recalled that he received a text message from Watts at approximately 6.15 a.m. stating that Watts was at the site. McNeil provided consent for interviewing agents to review and photograph text messages exchanged between McNeil and Watts. These messages are electronically maintained with this document. The actual time of this text message stating, you headed out to Survey, I'm out here, was 6.41 a.m. McNeil arrived at Survey 319 with, with Melissa Parrish at approximately 8 a.m. McNeil and Parrish drove separately in their work trucks, but they arrived at the battery together. Watts appeared to be normal, which is described as nice, quiet, and pleasant. McNeil also described Watts as a hard worker who gets things done. McNeil noted that Watts' pants were tucked into his boots, and McNeil had made a joke about that. Watts appeared to take the joke in good humor. Watts was wearing blue fire-resistant shirt and pants. Survey 319 is described as a standard size site of approximately a half acre containing two tanks, a separator, and a pump. McNeil, Parrish, Watts, and Troy McCoy worked on Survey 319 for a while, then left to work on Union Pacific Railroad Company, 1029. At UPRC, 1029, the operators met Cody Roberts. Roberts had reported a leak on Survey 319 the previous Friday, August 10th, but he began his day at the UPRC. While at UPRC, Watts began talking on his telephone. McNeil learned that some type of security alarms were activating in, at Watts' home. Watts explained that a neighbor was at his front door. 
and he was looking at his phone. Huh. The neighbor, it was Nicole. I don't know. Watts took approximately five or six calls while standing near McCoy's truck. Watts appeared worried and flustered about the alarm. Watts stated something to the effect of something, something is not right. I have to go check it out. And he left UPRC 1029 at approximately noon to go out to go check his home, check his house. At approximately 3.23 p.m., McNeil called Watts to ask how Watts was doing. McNeil joked and asked something to the effect of, did you catch the robber? Watts replied that his family was missing. McNeil offered assistance if Watts needed anything. McNeil did not recall Watts making any odd comments during the day or during follow-up conversations. McNeil was provided contact information for interviewing agents, and he was asked to call if he recalled additional information. Later on, August 15, 2018, Ryder called McNeil asking for additional directions to Survey 319. McNeil provided the requested information and also advised that he had recalled some Im additional information. On Monday, August 13th, McNeil had observed Watts wearing old boots with his pants tucked in as it previously stated. McNeil thought the pants being tucked into the boots was unusual, but he also told but he was also told by Troy McCoy that Watts had a new pair of boots that he had been wearing. Watts was not wearing a new pair of boots on Monday. McNeil also recalled Watts complaining that he was hot when McNeil and Parrish arrived. McNeil remarked that his complaint was odd as it was only around 8 a.m. Yeah, because he was digging and working, working uh, his heart rate up. McNeil remarked that his complaint was odd as it was only around 8 a.m and McNeil did not recall it being very warm. McNeil did not recall seeing any perspiration or stains on Watts' clothing. McNeil did not recall if Watts had performed any work on the site by the time McNeil and Parrish had arrived. Okay, so that's that interview. So those are those interviews. I just wanted to read them and see what you guys think. I think now that I was reading that McNeil one, I feel like I did read parts of that to you guys, I think, already. Um, but... Um, if you guys have any um, requests on like certain parts of the discovery you want me to read through, let me know. If not, I'll just keep trying to find some um, some good good parts. Um, or I don't know. I guess they're all kind of I mean interesting. I mean, of course, you have to skip through some of the stuff that's just repeats or like stuff that doesn't really say too much. But um, there's a lot of information in there and. Um, I just wanted to, um, you know, um, also, if you guys have any requests for new cases, I know you guys have been this whole time, you know, this whole time I've been, you know, making videos, I've been asking for requests of new cases, and I know you guys have been giving them to me, and that's awesome, and thank you. Um, okay, so I think that's it for this video. Um, hopefully you guys learned something new maybe heard something new that you haven't heard before I don't know maybe you've heard it all I'm sure some of you guys haven't and my it sure is new for some of you um but like I said I'm just gonna go through you know some of the parts in the discovery that might be kind of interesting or just something that I think maybe you guys would want to listen to I don't know I'm just trying to pick out I don't even know because I know you. a lot of you guys have already heard a lot of this stuff. Um, so I was just kind of just trying to go through and maybe even remind you guys of some of the stuff because I know like when I first started, like I was saying before, when I first started um, researching this case <clears throat> was months ago, you know. Shoot, almost a year ago now, you know. So, you know, the stuff that when I first started researching it, if I go back through it now, like I'm reminded and like now knowing kind of what we know now about everything, all, you know, new details come up and knowing like certain things now and then going back to like old information that you learned about months ago or almost a year ago and, and now you're reading it or seeing it, you're able to see it differently because you know you have new facts and new information to, to, to look at that with. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I'm kind of going back through it to see if, if it makes me see something different that's why I'm reading it to you guys certain parts that maybe you've heard before but 
you know, if you heard it months ago or almost a year ago or whenever you heard it, um, think about how many new, um, how much new stuff has came to light, like how much new little details that you've learned. Do you know what I'm saying? So now when you go back and hear it again, it's like you hear things like, oh, well, now I'm listening to it because I know I see it this way because I know that, you know, because I, I know these details that I didn't know the first time when I was listening it you know, or hearing it. So I don't know. It could help you maybe, um, or help you. I don't know what I'm saying, help you, but it could just maybe give you a new, um, perception on some of this stuff. Um, and like I said, there's a couple things, you know, when I'm going through it where it's just like, whoa, either I missed it or like, I, I don't remember reading some of this stuff. Um, for instance, like we're J that Jamie Watts uh, thing where she called, or they could look like they called her and, you know, and she hung up on her or whatever. I don't remember seeing that, the, you know, the first few couple times I went through the discovery. So there's so much to it that like, you know, you do miss some stuff. So when you go back through it, you, I feel like you're always going to catch something new. And then also even the stuff that you've already seen, you're looking at it different now, you know? So, um, so yeah, all right, so this is the end of this video, and so um, I hope you guys have a great night, and um, I will talk to you guys later. Bye.